Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of uh, ICB TV, as we're calling it at the moment, but we are going to come up with a different name because most of you are not watching it on television. Uh, it's looking a bit dull out here, although the temperature is soaring, so uh, I'm uh, sitting here in my shirt and tie at the moment just uh, to keep you all happy, but apart from that, uh, I may be uh, dropping my jacket any minute now as it, it's get, it is getting a bit warm. And uh, just so that it doesn't uh, fill you with too much anxiety, I am actually wearing my uh, bunny rabbit tie today. This is for, this is obviously the Easter bunny, so I hope you're, uh, you're happy with me doing that. Um, lots of things going on at the moment. Very good day yesterday, we all thought, with Claire. Uh, the questions that she was answering on payroll were extremely well received. Actually, uh, we've had so many questions that haven't been answered yet that she is busy working away to finalise that. They are going up a bit at a time on our Q&A section, so that's on the uh, COVID hub. So don't forget that's onto the website, hit resources along the top bar, and then uh, COVID, so you will go straight into that. Uh, we are very fortunate to have with us today somebody that uh, those of us who've been with ICB for a while know very well, Nick Good, who is uh, Vice President Growth for Revolut Business. And those of you who uh, have been reading your daily prompt properly will know that we came across Nick many, many years ago when he had a similar position of VP, but a product with Sage. And we worked very closely with Nick for a long time. And he actually was one of our keynote speakers at a, a summit. And I know a number of you have mentioned, oh, I remember him. He's still around. Yeah, he's still around. Good afternoon, Nick. How are you? Very well, thank you, Gary, and thank you for the warm welcome, and hello to everybody from the ICB. Um, uh, as soon as I was, uh, it was made public that I was leaving Sage to join Revolut Business, I contacted Gary, because I knew that I wanted to work with you guys again. So it's a real pleasure to be here, um, and we're going to talk about Revolut Business. Um, so, so, I think just I'm going to jump... Just tell us what a challenger bank is in your words, because I've told them what I think it is. You tell us what a, a ch challenger oh, bank is. Yeah, so, so we'll get on to that. Let, let me just run through the presentation, Gary. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that off in a minute. So um, for those of you who don't know me, just a quick introduction, and we'll talk about Revolut in a, in a moment. So um, as um, Gary said, I, I was at Sage. I was the, the, the leader of Sage One which is now called Sage Business Cloud Accounting. And we work closely with uh, the ICB, with Gary and Amy and the team. Um, as you mentioned, one of the highlights was doing uh, your keynote presentation in London a few years ago, quite a few years ago now. Um, and, you know, I've always been the, the driver behind the growth of the cl cloud digital applications and certainly working with accountants and bookkeepers. In fact, my first job at Sage was to run marketing for accountants out of the Manchester office. And then I went on and did various other things um, in, in product marketing and most latterly was running marketing for the UK. So with your organization, with the challenges of accountants, digital progression and very much a good friend of the ICB. So it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for that. Revolut, some of you know, uh, many of you may already oh, be We're losing you a bit, Nick, here. Yeah, if you're, if you're moving backwards and forwards, we're getting the- Sorry, uh, I will sit still. Sorry, Gary, I will sit still, apologies. Um, so many of you probably know Revolut um, as a consumer. Um, let me just give you a few data points about Revolut, based in the UK, but with um, a multinational um, presence. Um, in the retail banking space, um, close to 10 million customers. And in the um, business space, uh, Revolut business, which is the product we're going to talk about today, which I'm responsible for its growth with my team. Revolut Business, we have over 300,000 customers today um, and growing extremely fast. So, 
Gary, you asked me what is a challenger bank, sometimes called a neo bank, sometimes called a digital bank, but essentially providing bank accounts with that work digitally with no branches, um, offering um, uh, an experience mainly through mobile and also with business through a browser based experience. And this really is, in my view, um, the next big disruptive change that we're going to see in small business banking in particular. Um, and we'll talk about why in a moment. So Revolut, there are, uh, we have, there are others, of course, out there. Revolut is one of the largest, one of the fastest growing. And Revolut business is all about bringing um, digital financial management um, to the small business world. And naturally, knowing the small business world and understanding the critical role that you, the bookkeeper, plays with um, the small business, it's a natural conversation that we should be having to say, what is the value of Revolut business to you and to your clients? So our aim today is to share that with you. I'm joined by two colleagues, Giovanni, who's our product expert, commercial development expert, and he's going to be able to answer some of the more detailed questions that you may have, as I've only just joined uh, Revolut a few weeks ago. And also Michaela, who's my marketing manager responsible for putting this together. So if you have questions, we're definitely here to answer during and after the call. So let's, let's jump in. Um, we all know the world is going digital and we feel that the current environment with has absolutely underlined the importance of everything being digital. We've seen it in the accounting space and the accounting software and payroll software, which you all are experts at, how moving to the cloud has many benefits. And let's face it right now, it's absolutely essential that you can access your business tools anywhere, anytime, and any device. This is in contrast to the old school uh, of banking or the established banks. And we've seen over, you know, over the last few years, the high street banks closing down um, and actually the bank account being one of the things that small business owners stick with. In fact, our research shows that over 40% have had the same business bank account for over 10 years. And yet right in front of their eyes, um, bank account branches are closing and the new digital banks such as Revolut with applications such as Revolut Business are coming into the market. So really um, it feels as if the world has moved on and that the time is now to switch to, uh, to digital banking, not just from a personal perspective, but also from a small business and bookkeeping perspective. We've been working with accountants and um, I'm, you know, I've been banging the drum for bookkeepers, as you may imagine, um, um, and explaining the, the crucial difference between accountants and bookkeepers and the critical role that the bookkeeper plays um, in the UK and Ireland and beyond. Um, but basically, um, uh, you know, you've all experienced my personal journey with Revolut started before I was even interviewing for a job where I was trying to get a new account from my, my bank as a, as a consumer and it was just too difficult and so I went online and signed up to Revolut and, and, and the rest is history. So, um, you know, the old world is you've got lots of different devices, etc. and um, you can't get to meet anyone. You have to fill in a million forms and it's just a big pain. I think it's okay for me to play this video now. There's a, a message on the chat. I'm gonna try the video. I'm hoping this is gonna work okay, so stay with us. This is um, some, uh, some input from accountants. We got it on mute.
Okay. Uh, I'm not sure how well that rendered. Um, it will be in the slides and we can share that again, but this is a customer and finance and accountant, but you can see, you know, a relatively small practice who's um, been able to go on that digital transformation journey with Revolut. And um, we really today uh, are just trying to introduce you to the concept that, that, that Revolut business offers. So we talk about uh, global, uh, being a global business and Revolut's mission, stated mission is to be the number one global digital bank. Um, we are, uh, we, what I know from my years at Sage and working with you and small businesses that many customers actually don't have a global ambition, but regardless, one of the key features is that you can, um, you can set up accounts in multiple currencies on the fly within the app. It's extremely simple. So in terms of dealing with business internationally, even between just the UK and Ireland, makes it incredibly easy. So we're going to look at some of the features, um, some of the features in the application in the next few slides. As mentioned, built for global business. Um, what will really, really strike you as a consumer of, of Revolut and as a business user of Revolut business is that it is incredibly simple to set up um, accounts in multiple currencies. Literally within a few clicks, you can have uh, a dollar account, a euro account, whatever, multiple currencies. It, again, within literally a few clicks that would take you goodness knows how long working with a traditional bank. Um, again, if you're a Revolute, uh, Revolute um, user in the consumer space, this is a very similar, uh, very similar experience. And everything is done in a very easy to use way in the application. One of the things we saw in, in, in the previous slides was just how hard it can be to set up a business account. Um, whereas with, with Revolut, it's incredibly simple. I do want to emphasize that we have um, very deep uh, security check, things like um, you know, making sure that the businesses that are being set up are real, anti-money laundering, financial crime, et cetera. And we are extremely vigilant and there's a large team of experts within Revolut that ensure that, that those things are taken care of. So I think there's a combination of speed, but also security, but you can set up, once you, once you get up and running, you can set up your team incredibly quickly. Um, and everything again is done in, a, in, a, in an interface, which is more uh, familiar as almost like a, a user app, you know, end, an end user app than some kind of business product. So it's extremely simple. What you will find with, um, with Revolut Business is, is this notion of fluidity all the time. You're getting data, information, alerts, when a payment is, is made or received, you, get a box, do that. you have a dashboard which shows you exactly where you stand on your cash flow, on all of your sub accounts, um, across your team, in the different currencies and so on. So you just log in and have that that instant access to all of your business data, obviously 24 seven, um, and in a much easier way than could be offered by the traditional banks. Again, transparency, the alerting I love, which is you know exactly when you receive or made a payment, for example, or when something hasn't worked, um, it gives you instant access you can freeze and unfreeze your card with one click. You can allow swipe payments. You can manage everything incredibly simply just from the application and, um, and also through the web. This will obviously give you complete control over your business finances. And I want to emphasize at this point that we have been working with um, some of the software vendors to ensure integration with the soft, with the accounting product. So Xero and uh, QuickBooks are already integrated with Revolut Business and no surprise, we're also working with Sage to make that integration happen. And what that means is not only can you see all of these um, payments, uh, expenses, etc., in one place, 
but you're also going to be able to integrate seamlessly with your accounting. Um, this then feeds through to you, the bookkeeper or the accountant, and therefore we could create that seamless, frictionless experience and uh, always on you know, digital management of your finances, which ultimately is the goal of every small business, right? So very excited to be working with Xero, uh, Intuit and Sage um, as, we, as we move forward with those integrations. Now, expense management is something that we've, we've been pushing on for quite some time. Um, simple expense management within the, the application I mentioned, I should have mentioned, sorry, uh, free agent as well. Um, this, is, um, this is one of the, the first kind of accounting style um, uh, features that we've been building. Um, I want to mention here that we're also going to be releasing simple invoicing within Revolut Business. And again, coming from my background working with Space and Space Business Cloud, we're super excited about that because for the very small business, um, receiving invoices is obviously a, a critical uh, business process. And again, we want to make it extremely easy um, to, to raise an invoice, to see the invoices that are outstanding, et cetera, and the same with expenses. Now, one of the things that we'll talk about in a minute is that Giovanni um, from our team is going to be the guy that can give you a one-to-one -one demonstration of Revolut Business for anybody that's interested. And um, he can also answer any of the detailed questions. And even we may even have time for him to talk during this session. Um, well, we can go into some of the more, uh, some of the finer points of the application and how it, how it works exactly. But ideally, what, you, what I'm hoping you can see here is that we have, you know, we really thought about what, what does a small business need? Um, it's clarity, simple business process, money in, money out, um, managing payments in different currencies, setting up sub accounts, setting up your team, really creating a digital hub for your finances across your organization, and then critically the connection with the bookkeeper and the accountant on the back end. Obviously, this leads you, we, we, we you know, anything where you can save time, um, eat, make processes easy, we, we believe in that, that enabling you to focus on what's next. What do you need to do next in your business? Which client can you serve next? Um, what do you need to, or maybe, maybe you're going to actually take some time out, but Typically, small businesses are you know, incredibly uh, under pressure, and we want people to be able to make finances super easy. They can focus on what's next. Now, um, we will, um, we'll, we're really happy to be, to be able to, um, to offer you, obviously, through the, the difficult time that we're going through, um, some uh, a, a, a discount. So, we're offering three months free um, and live demos um, with Giovanni, who's one of our experts, which again, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have time um, to talk uh, about some of the detail and answer some of your questions. Um, uh, so we'll be posting this, you can see here, if you email us or contact me or contact Giovanni, um, we'll be able to get you a demo, um, set you up with, with three months free and get you going with a dedicated account manager. Um, most of all as well for me, I, it's about understanding your feedback. Um, my experience of the ICB uh, community is that you're pretty straightforward in telling it like it is. And actually, <laughs> well, that's here. Uh, I think that's set, the tone set by you, Mr. Carter. Um, but that's what we, because ultimately I believe that um, digital banking is the next big thing for uh, you know, the complete digitization of small business. And we really need to understand who needs the application really work for you, just as the way, just in the way that the, uh, you know, the, the small, the, the, the software, the cloud software companies have done over the, over the years. So that's our offer to you, to the ICB. Um, that's a, a, an introduction to Revolut Business. And now we can um, definitely open it up for questions um, for me and for the team that's on the call. 
Okay, Nick, thank you for that. I mean, I've, I've got a few questions of my own here, which uh, you uh, partly answered. Not, um, you're obviously talking about high street banks not being what they were. They're very difficult to get hold of managers, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, you don't have a high street presence to get rid of. You started this, you hit the road running. You've looked at everything, presumably, that banks have done wrong, and you're putting that right, and everything that they were doing right, you're going to hang in with. Um, we're getting used to digitalization, as you say. We're uh, thankfully very, very heavily cloud based now on all of our computing as, as ICD bookkeepers. So, uh, this current lockdown is proving less of a problem than it would have done 10 years ago when we all had floppy disks and desktops. So, you know, we're very pleased about that. But uh, on, a, on the basis that the high street banks are trying to catch up with you now. What, what is it exactly that you think is such a big difference with Revolut? I mean, have you just got nicer people at the end of the phone? Are we going to be able to get hold of them more often? Um, you know, what, what, what's, what's the big USP for you? Yeah, I mean, okay, that's a great question, Gary. So one of them has got to be just ease of setup. In other words, um, you know, you, you, you go and try, in, in today's world, who has time, <clears throat> and obviously right now you can't, that's, no, that's an exceptional situation, but who has time to, you know, go to a branch, meet with someone, fill in reams of paperwork, <clears throat> wait, etc. when actually you could get set up and running in a matter of minutes um, and, you know, receive you receive a, a, a card, a, a login for a web page, a card, and an app. You know, download the app on your phone. I mean, it, it, it's incredibly slick that get going, and and we think that, um, and we see from our, our our customer feedback that that is one of the one of the um, the absolute USPs. Like we're all used to now, just getting things done really quickly, and why you know yeah. why delay when you can go on? The other big one that that um, that is uh, incredibly popular, of course, is, is the international aspect. Multi-currency bank accounts set up right there in your, in the palm of your hand, and until you've actually done that, uh, it is astonishing how quickly. You can, you can set up accounts in different currencies. Not only that, but we offer the absolute, you know, the, the, the best um, exchange FX rates. So you're gonna be saving every business that deals in any other currency. <clears throat> and again, even if that's just between the UK and Ireland, and let's face it, that's a very common uh, business uh, pathway, are going to be saving significant amounts of money on FX month in, month out. Um, so those things alone make it incredibly, uh, like refreshingly different from a standard bank account where you have to spend a lot of time getting it set up. It's just one currency and you're going to be paying high rates for anything involving a uh, currency exchange. Hmm. We, um, the, the whole profession seems to be getting very muddied at the moment with um, everybody trying to do everybody else's job. And I noticed that one of your links there, you said was to Receipt Bank, which is obviously owned by a bank. Um, and, and everybody, uh, I know Zero are looking at offering credit cards and loans and various things. Now you're obviously going to be wanting to do the same again. Do you see in a couple of years time, there's going to be some sort of leveling out here? Or is it always going to, or do you think the future is multifaceted for every organization? You just pick the organization you like and you, you get a, a whole basket full of trips. Yeah, um, so I think two, two responses there. One is there will always be some kind of overlap. Um, I, I know that, you know, the vendors in the software world, on the one hand, diversify. We saw that recently with um, the, some acquisition, an acquisition that um, Intuit made. Um, and you know you've seen it with vendors like Sage getting into payments and, and so on over time. I do feel that um, my opinion is that the that 
that the most successful vendors will have a clear mission that they will stick to, right? Right. And um, that actually what you're seeing in the digital banking space, if you will, is, you know, there are a lot of players out there. That, that and in every other market of digital uh, growth, there always emerges, you know, a top three. Yeah. Uh, and we've seen that in cloud accounting, right? And we know who they are. Um, and that, I believe, I've never seen, you know, a market where that hasn't happened. So that would be my prediction that there will be, you know, leaders and that others fall away. What I'll emphasize with regard to Revolut Business is our, our vision is absolutely to be the global financial hub, digital financial hub for consumers and business alike. And, um, the, I mentioned the, the top of the, the presentation that the, the, the massive numbers that we have around the world on our retail app. And inside the retail app, you know, we have, that it's incredibly rich. You can trade cryptocurrency. You can get a Revolut Junior for your children. You can get a whole host of perks, which we haven't even talked about, which are also coming through in Revolut business. You can um, save money, uh, save into into different budgets for yourself but also create savings accounts and the ability to do all of that simply from an app on your phone in multiple currencies and i haven't even talked about sending money to other people which is just a couple of clicks away um we you know what we have a very very clear focus on being that that number one global financial hub um and it's really our, our mission now to develop that further for the business community as we have done for the, for the consumer community worldwide. Okay, that's, that's good. I mean, I, I think the, the challenge of bank is certainly for the moment, whatever you want to call it, challenge bank, uh, digital bank or whatever, um, it's certainly got the imagination of our members. And at our last summit, which was the end of last year, uh, on, just on a show of hands, it was obvious that a lot of people had already taken the leap. Um, and, you know, you would think the bookkeepers are perhaps a little bit sometimes slow to react because they like to get every, all their ducks in a row first. But some of them have obviously got all their ducks there and they've, de they've decided to move for that. Uh, we've had a few, you've alluded to it, but we've had a few uh, scare stories about um, Russian oligarchs or forming bogus bank accounts, um, not, not Revolut, I have to say, it was, it was one of the other banks. Um, and I think one of the, the main things that our members always ask, whether it's about software or, or whatever, but it's certainly about banks is, um, how safe is, is the bank, firstly, that this isn't all gonna get tapped and our systems are gonna get read off and used somewhere else, and also the, financial backing that's behind you to make sure that if our money is there it's safe and you're not just going to close up shop one night and take it all with you yeah i mean i think those are those are very valid questions um, um i am quite new to the organization what i can tell you is that um the setup that we have for um you know the kyb the know your business process as you sign up is extremely uh, rigorous and that the financial crime prevention team, anti-money laundering, um, all of the financial controls, risk management are very similar to what you would find in a, in a traditional bank. And many of the executives within Revolut have come from that world. Um, and this is by no means a kind of uh, by no means a, 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 an amateur outfit is extremely uh, well regulated. Clearly, um, the regulator, the the, um, the the FSA and so on, have yeah. to be you know have to be uh, happy with what we're doing. As we expand, like for example, we are we're now. You may have seen recently in the media that Revolut's launching in the USA, um, yeah. and that includes Revolut Business. And we're going through all of that regulatory compliance process right now, which of course in the USA is complex due to the you know, multi-states and so on and so on. So, um, you know, this, the, the growth of the, the business has been 100% dependent on the, 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 the platforms, processes, 
um, regulatory compliance that any bank would have. Um, so yeah. obviously anything digital, be that, you know, your social media, email, any bank account is subject to, um, to anything online is subject to, you know, the, 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 the risks that, that we all take every day, I guess, in terms of payments. And like I say, yeah. you know, you, most of us have had our social media or something hacked at some point and that, that is there. However, um, I, I will actually take an action to get some, some, some concrete data about this to, to talk about how we um, counteract that. But I know, for example, in my time at Sage, just how much you know the, the guard rails that we had up against security breaches, etc. Um, yeah. It's taken extremely seriously within within Revolut, and and I think we you know we as consumers and, and Revolut business customers should have no more concern than we would with any other bank. Yeah, no, I think that's good. I, it's it's not a major concern, I don't think, but I just wanted to give you the opportunity to sort of reassure us that uh, um, Revolut is is not a, some sort of fly by night organization from some entrepreneur in uh, wherever uh and I, I remember when i first heard that you moved which was a bit of a surprise you've been at sage almost well years was it 12 years 10 years 10 years okay um i mentioned it and amy at the time said wow revolute they're big so you know the, the reputation was there for, uh, already so i think i think that's good it's very useful to get that um You've got a very good offer for us there, right? uh, three months free if, if our, any of our members want to bank uh, with you. So the £25 a month there afterwards, that, that's an ongoing fee to cover everything? Yeah, so we actually have different plans. So there is a free version of the Revolut business product, okay? But this, um, this uh, £25 a month gives you different, different advantages. We actually have a hundred pounds a month for larger business as well. I don't know, actually, Giovanni, this might be a time for you to just explain the differences between those. Absolutely, Nick. Hi, everybody. Uh, pleasure to be on this stage today. As Nick was saying, the um, different tier plans are aimed at different type of businesses. Uh, what differs amongst like 25 pounds, 100 pounds and beyond is just the number of, uh, you know, allowance things that are included in your membership. So to say, if you do a lot of SWIFT transfer on behalf of your clients, on the uh, 25 pounds plan, there are five included. On the 100 pounds one, there are 50. So that means that there is quite a big, uh, quite a big uh, difference. And if you can compare that with the price of normally a SWIFT transfer, for example, in uh, high street uh, banks in the UK, that's definitely worth your attention, I, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I also, I would spend more time talking about the different plans, but I think the best way is perhaps I'll share a link with you all so you can have a look with, um, uh, you know, you can have a look at our website and if any question arises, I'm here anyway until the end of the webinar to answer them. Great. Thank, thank you, Giovanni. Um, yeah, is this offer, uh, you've obviously put it in pounds, is this uh, expandable? To our global audience, or are you at the moment concentrating on, on our UK members? Uh, I'm sure it's expandable. The Revolut business product is is available in other countries, absolutely, Ireland, uh, France, etc. So, yes, of course, we, we will we'll work work with that. Oh, okay, great. Well, that, that, that's something. Um, is Amy online yet? Sorry, say again. Yes, I am. I was just wondering if Amy was there. It's just Hi, Nick. Hi, Giovanni. Ah, uh, there you are. Hi. Giovanni is um, doing my job for me, I'm pleased to say. I'm taking it easy. So he's very kindly been responding to the questions, which are all a little bit above my head anyway. All right. Uh, What's the, what are they like then? What sort of questions so do you for, get? So, for example, um, Adrian asked if the £25 monthly fee includes all of the operating fees for running one or more currency accounts. And Giovanni says that you can um, have as many sub accounts as you want in 28 different currencies. Oh, that's good. Which is a fair few to be getting on with, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah. I have to say, the screen looks very sexy there. I'm, I'm you know, we're all getting used to these uh, icons and 
as, as, as we see there, everything, everything with a quick flick, uh, a quick flick through. I'll try and say that again. Um, so I, I can see the advantage to that. Um, yeah. Alan I, Thomas had a good question. Yeah. Uh, he asks, how do you deal with pay? Can you pay in money um, with, a, with a check or cash if you don't have a high street bank? No, it does the that right now. Jam, Giovanni, do you want to talk to that? Yeah, unfortunately, that is not something that we're doing at present. However, when things like that arise, we tend to like, you know, keep it in our roadmaps. And definitely that's, that's been there for a while. We've been thinking about it, but we really think as a business that, you know, these are tools that are not necessarily like going to be with us for much longer. And, uh, you know, we thought that just to start and give more features as soon as possible, we focused on those instead of going, you know, to checks and, uh, and uh, cash deposits. But yeah, we're, we're listening to this audience. Do you find that you've got a particular age group that takes quickly for this? You know, age group? Yeah, you know, I mean, are they the 50 pluses uh, or the 40 pluses like me and you, Nick, or uh, <laughs> you know, 30 to 40? What are, what, you know, who's taking to this quickest? I'm interested uh, just as a general point, really. I, I would be giving you my impression if I, if I answered that question. Giovanni, do we have any demographic data? I have to be honest, I couldn't really hear you well, Gary. Could you, do you mind repeating the question? Yeah, I just wondered if you at this stage had any figures as to what age group a person is when they're most likely to move to a challenger bank. Are they young people or are they actually slightly more mature people who, who just are in for a good deal? I, I think it's a mix of both, actually. I don't have the exact figures right now, but I think it's a healthy mix of like people that are just maybe tech enthusiasts across generations. And then people, you know, that were like kind of digital natives. So they see like the chat is actually the best way to talk about customer support. And uh, I wanted to intervene earlier, like you said, don't you think that, like the lack of a, of a branch is, can be a bit uh, limitative sometimes? Well, I actually think that there is a certain demographic, me included, that, you know, sometimes it's free on a Saturday or late in the evening and just want to have the chance to sort out the bank that, you know, the, the usual things that you would like to do every day, but then there is a meeting that overruns and you cannot do so. I think that we answer well to that kind of needs as well. That's why we're a bit more across generation that we, you know, maybe we also, we, we think normally. Yeah, I, I think a very large proportion of our members are already cloud savvy with their software. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we've had various reasons for doing that, given to us uh, more time, more clients, whatever it is you want to do. So I, I think they're pretty okay with that. Uh, there, there are a number of, offerings at the moment obviously on banks uh, and we're getting more and more from the traditional banks who are trying to hold on to their market but I think I think I can see the challenger banks really having quite a significant effect on what we do at, 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 at years come by. Now the other thing is uh, just asking about this special offer that you're offering here can this be extended to our clients because they are uh, an ICB bookkeeper. Sorry to put you on the spot yeah, here. <laughs> I, 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 no, I mean, I think so. I mean, genuinely, you know, we, we recognize right now that this is the time for people to go digital and, and if you're not already there, regardless yeah. of what you think about Revolut or anybody else, like, you know, massive wake up call that people have if we can help customers get on board with that great all right um and so yes like we we can um i mean i think a lot of our users in public business are freelance or very small and they're on the pre pre version okay. this is more for the established business so i think i think it would be really worth you know people who are interested for them and their clients to um, to get connected, um, uh, we can put our own emails on to not a problem, get the demo and see which is most suitable. And if it's the, the £25 plan, um, we can offer that offer to that community as well as, you know, um, seeing there will be some clients who want to, will want to get going um, with the free plan because they're small and they have to be. So, yeah, it's a short answer. Back to the demographic question, Gary. One thing I've noticed is um, 
people that I met, the customers that I met, and actually people from my own network when it, when it was made clear I was moving to Revolut business. Um, the, a lot of the, the people I've spoken to are in the sort of 40 plus bracket. I think that the, 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 the basic summary is this is not just something for, you know, somebody said to me the other day, I'm too old to use WhatsApp. The guy was probably 55. And I thought, you know, these applications are so easy to use. Um, uh, so this is definitely not one that is reserved for the millennials or Gen Z. It will appeal to anyone who's on board with cloud or digital other products like accounting role. Yeah. Like I said in the, in, in the but to me, this is just the logical next step to connect all of your financials uh, directly into business and therefore for bookkeepers and accountants, it makes total sense, regardless of you know, age or location. Well, I mean, our, our members are pretty well spread across the age, uh, ages, um, but I mean, our average nowadays is, you know, down in the 40s. And, um, but yeah, so I think the last count we looked at, we were in excess of, 97% cloud-based now. Not necessarily fully, but virtually everybody is using cloud at some stage. So they know what they're doing. They know their way around the screen. Um, I was very surprised when Making Tax Digital came in that such a lot of accountants were finding this almost too revolutionary for them. And they do seem to be a little bit further behind. But of course, most of um, an accountant's work was, was always, as far as I can see, you had an account manager who went out and saw the client once a year but apart from that, they all took it back to the office and, and people sat in an office um, with, with their uh, desktop box and, and did all the accounts. Uh, but bookkeepers have always been different. We travel to our clients more. We, we work with them more closely and we're in and out on a regular basis. So I, I think this will suit them. And I, as I say, I like, I like the look of it. Um, it uh, so is Giovanni answering all the questions, Amy? Do we not have anything to put to Nick? You're, you're taking advantage of Giovanni's slightly better uh, web link, are you? Yes, I am a little bit. I just wonder whether we could just, um, there's a little bit of clarification sought over whether or not um, Revolut is a bank and if therefore it's covered by the FSCS and if that affects the sort of the level of protection on, on, on the customer's money. Oh. Um, yes, the short answer is we are protected by the FCS. Um, again, I think we should provide you with the correct links to the, the right information that your members can read up and you know, verbalize it and, and completely in me. Um, so let's make sure to follow up with um, the content for you to make sure that that's complete because I understand that the reaction that people have. I, th I think, Nick, that. Um what you need to do is invest in a slightly better uh, web link down there somewhere. We are losing a few of every sort of every quarter word or something rather, but I, I think we've got the gist of what you're saying. So you're still down there locked down, but with your, do you still have all your polo ponies? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. So. I still have six polo ponies. And are you now tending to them yourself or do you still get stable as uh, Yes, I, I'm, uh, I'm on a, a, a very early morning schedule of um, farm work and uh, looking after my animals and then switching to my other life, which is uh, So yeah, it's pretty interesting at the moment. And I'm getting a, a few questions here which are coming through to my, uh, my account here on my phone, just different things. I think they probably think uh, they didn't know to put them uh, openly out to you, but... Um, What's happening to Sage? Uh, you, Jennifer, so many people have now departed. I, Lee Perkins, I know we've known Lee for a long time. He seems to be doing a good job over here in the UK. I presume uh, he's the man that we all look to now, or what? But I would have no concerns. Um, you know, Jennifer Warawa, whom you're referring to, who's a very, very good friend of mine, she was at Sage for, I believe, 11 years. Um, I was at Sage for nine years, 11 months, to be precise. 
And right. I felt, I felt, and I will always feel, and I know Jennifer feels the same, incredibly proud to work for our, our great British institution, which is SAGE. I think I will always be green. Wherever I go in my house, I've got SAGE paraphernalia. I don't know if you can see those headphones with SAGE on, like there's literally SAGE stuff everywhere in my life. And I, you know, it was a very tough decision for me to, to move from SAGE. Yeah. Um, I think, um, you know, I, I'm with the pro one inside SAGE one that was, was new. And I've always been, you know, as a SAGE, I worked in other software companies where I was leading in it. And I felt at the time, the opportunity in my way, and I felt growth and super innovation and disruption, and also being very close to customers um, in the work I say. The other thing I would say is um, you know, Sage UK, uh, led by Sandy Gibbs, I was running marketing for him last year. He's an incredible yeah. guy, brilliant leader. That team is really solid. And you find that team, there are people who've been working at Sage for 10, 20, 30 years who are still there. And I, I, I would say more than ever, and under Steve had the uh, Sage is mojo back and is absolutely, you know, the Sage is paramount, especially in a time like this. So, you know, you have to think about people's careers run and, and, and you know, it was a sad decision I made. I wanted to do something for you and, and, and help another business to grow in the way that I helped Sacrifice to do so. Yeah, I, um, yeah I'm sorry, we, we missed a little bit of that, too, right? But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think anybody's worried about Sage. As a company, we are keeping an eye on their new uh, web-based products because, as I say, I think we've all understood the message of uh, being online and, and instead of uh, it makes it easier than us having to physically go to our clients every single week it gives us more time more opportunity and also will help with IR35 if uh, that is all brought back in after the uh, after the lockdown which we're, we're all keeping a very close eye on um, I, I know you need to get off Nick you were saying you needed to boat away um, you've already overshot the mark a little bit there uh, can I just thank you for coming and joining us? I'm hoping that this is the start of a new relationship with you and, and obviously with uh, Revolut. We've got a lot of things coming up during the year. Uh, it's a little bit stuck it and see and playing it by ear, whichever you want to use, because we don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, but certainly uh, our Inspire Talk goes ahead as uh, a virtual meeting. And our branches uh, have gone virtual already, and they're actually absolutely going through the roof. We're getting thousands attending those. And we are at the moment hoping to do our uh, summit at the end of the year. We're not taking, uh, we're getting lists of people who want a ticket at the moment, who'd like to go, and we're, but we're not taking any money yet in case the lockdown lasts even longer and you know it's, it's gonna be difficult to get people out of their homes. So uh, we'll see how that goes, but I mean, it is genuinely very, very good to know that you've not uh, left the profession. Um, Jennifer's got to work in the dirt, as she calls it. Uh, we were very pleased to see you were back in with something we can, we can uh, uh, do something with. And we're all hoping that Revolut becomes a, a household name and uh, we can play you off against our existing bank and get a good deal, you know. But anyway, so thank you very much for that. We keep yeah, no, questions and we'll field those through to um, Giovanni to get answered. And Giovanni, whilst you're answering them, if you can remember to, to copy us into whatever it is, uh, we will then carry those as a Q&A. Is that right, Amy, or have we got them anyway? Yeah, absolutely. If anyone's got further questions, um, I think Revolut has very kindly given some more links and some contact details as well. So if you want to send them to us or send them to Revolut as per your... And desire. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Thank so, you. thank you, Revolu. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. See you soon. And uh, right. Okay, Amy. Can I just have a quick chat with you while you're on? Sure. Yeah. So, absolutely.
uh, tomorrow we have got Jackie on. It will be the last show this week uh, because, of course, we've got Good Friday and we'll also be off air for um, Bank Holiday Monday, so we're back in on Tuesday. So Jackie's coming back in to uh, finish off where she started and she's got the answers to one or two more questions that she's been able to sort out. I know she's been having long conversations this morning with Claire, who went down an absolute storm yesterday. And we are in negotiations at the moment to get Claire and Ian back, perhaps on a regular basis for the next month, month or couple of months, see how that goes. Because um, it's all going to be changed. And any day now, we're hoping that these um, dreaded forms are going to be available online so that we can uh, claim for our 80% that is going to be a time when everybody's going to say, well, what do I put in box number seven or something like that? So we're going to be here holding your hands throughout. Next week, uh, Tuesday, we're Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to be bringing a few of our members on uh, to talk about how they're coping. Uh, talking to our members at the moment, I think I've only come across one member that, that really thinks, sees this as a major problem. Uh, and I'm, helping hopefully helping them to, to sort of get through it a bit more but everybody else is saying it's very very positive they think it's going to be tough depending on how long it lasts but they've got um they're hanging on to clients they're helping their clients the clients who need them and also the everybody seems to be telling me they're getting new clients i was talking to uh claire allen from sussex this morning she was saying she's picked up three new clients uh, sylvia uh borhill from uh Berkshire, she's picked up two new clients taken on a new member of staff, interviewed them uh, online. So uh, that's interesting. And um, yeah, we've, we've got a lot. So next week we'll be having um, Steve Worrell, who is, he works out of Leeds. He is, um, he has a very much a tax-based practice, I believe, uh, very much more into the sort of high-end bookkeeping and accountancy. And he'll be coming on to, uh, to answer some questions for you, give his opinion. We'll also have Lucy Brown coming on. Lucy uh, is one of our, also one of our council members. Uh, she's out from uh, Lincolnshire out that way. And she's also a vicar's wife. So it'd be interesting to know how uh, difficult her life is at the moment, because not only does she support her clients, but uh, presumably she's out there supporting her husband during these very difficult times at the moment. And we've, um, We've also got somebody else coming on on Wednesday, haven't we? Hasn't somebody just come on? Um, float? Yes. Yes, That's I right. should say yes. Wednesday. Um, on Wednesday, yes. So Float has a very good um, cash flow tool um, that lets you layer different scenarios and look at things like um, you'll be able to pull out specific uh, invoices that you think you might not get paid or look at uh, you know the what would happen if you furloughed some of your staff but not others so it seems like an incredibly useful tool um, and they've got a special deal for ICP members so that's um, even more attractive but you can use it for your own business and you can also use it for your clients as well but um, Float has twice won a Lucre award for cash flow forecasting software um, yeah, our members yeah. might remember them because they had those little blue ducks if you remember, and uh, when, when we uh, came up with the idea at our summit of having Sage Green, those of you who remember, we had the green in the middle of our uh, conference hall when we were at the QE2. Uh, I tried to persuade Float to have a little duck pond at the end and float their ducks on, and then everybody would uh, have some sort of competition to, to pick a duck with a, a prize uh, seller tape to its bottom. But uh, they didn't like that idea, so I hope, they, I hope they're going to be a bit more imaginative and inventive when they come on next week and we can have a good chat. Um, I don't think there's anything else I've got to say at the moment, other than- I say two uh, things. Uh, yeah, carry on, yeah. So just a thank you to Barry and Adrian, who have said that it has been announced that the portal for claiming back the furlough salary will be available on the 28th, uh, sorry, the 20th of April. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen this update myself, to be honest. So well done them. I haven't seen okay. it. Um, but also we are uh, sending out an email yeah. newsletter tomorrow so do look out for it uh, sometimes uh, it yeah. sorry I meant to mention your, that yeah of course yeah that's in your good. you know other folder if you're using Outlook which is quite annoying Susan Lang has just been on as well apparently to say that you're correct with the date the 20th that's it that's that's crunch day yeah that's crunch day so that'll be interesting 
So we'll be looking at that very, very early on to, and then coming to you with any help and guidance we can give you. Uh, I mean, throughout all of these uh, current days when we're locked down and everything else, do remember to, to uh, talk to us if you need us. Come on to the show. Go to one of your local branch meetings. I mean, they're turning out to be really, really effective. People are enjoying seeing other members uh, because they're a slightly smaller number than this where we get several hundreds here. Um, branch meetings are normally in the sort of 30 to 50 region and then you can actually go on screen, look at what other people look like, hopefully share what you look like and even ask questions live and, and have a chat. And we are spreading these right the way around the country. So if you're in counties where we don't have one of the other, we are we're just doing some work on the West Coast, so that's Cheshire, Lancashire and Cumbria. We'll have one there very shortly. We're going to invite you to one of those. And then um, this will take this uh, rather forced upon us opportunity to make sure that everybody has access to a good branch meeting because uh, talking to local people about what's going on in your business and learning from other people that are local to you is um, a, just a fantastic way of, of just expanding your knowledge. It gets you friendships and uh, you know, I just can't, I, um, can't say too much about that. It's, it's so important. And of course, at the end of the month, we should be doing the Inspire Tour. Now, the Inspire Tour is a bit like this, but it is more educational. It is learning. So you need to sit down with your cup of coffee and listen to it live or come on later. Um, and uh, there is a charge for that. There is a small charge for that because we're bringing in some speakers and we're bringing in some But um, it is well worth the money. And you get good CPD points for, for doing that. So um, keep an eye out for that. Um, Anything else coming up, Amy, that we know of? Anything particular? That's it, really, other than it looks, it has been confirmed that if you are authorised to act on behalf of your clients for PAYE, then you will be able to access the, uh, the coronavirus job scheme portal on their behalf. But if you're a file only agent, you won't be able to. And um, But we'll put some more information about that in the newsletter tomorrow, of course. And I think that's yeah, Look out for that. Um, one thing just to finish on. Uh, thank you very, very much for making this slot so popular. We are getting way in excess of 2,000 people a day tuning into this one way or another and downloading, which is an absolutely fantastic audience. Uh, you know, we are, we are uh, seeing figures from other organizations that are now starting to catch up with us. They've even used our Have a Coffee With um, title, etc., etc., and they're way behind. You know, we've always been a very, very tight community, a very um, committed group. And, um, you know, it's, it's just so nice to know that you're all there, that we can do something for you and we can all be part of this because this is going to end sometime. I mean, hopefully we shall have a, a Boris Prime Minister back on his feet, running it and finishing it and closing it off so that we're finished. Um, but I'm sure somebody there will help us if not because we all want to get back to, to our lives and uh, back to what we used to be. And I think looking at everything that our members are telling us, we're all going to come out of this. Um, I've said in, in my, my article that will be out tomorrow, you know, a little bit bruised and battered on occasions. Hopefully we're all well and we've survived this, um, but we're going to be a lot stronger and we're going to be able to cope with far more. And the business is just going to go sky high trust me it is going to go exponentially bigger than it's ever been so good to have you with us don't forget you're not just bookkeepers you're icb bookkeepers look forward to seeing you tomorrow bye